That's a big one. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week we're in Windsor, Nova Scotia for the British Motoring Festival. Now, this isn't really a big show, about 150 cars, but it's not a very big province either. But I'm telling you, it's held on the historic grounds of King's Edge Hill School, private school here in Windsor, and it's absolutely stunning. And they brought in some really wild looking cars. I'm gonna enjoy this, so pip pip, cheerio, and all that rot. Ian, how you doing, man? Good, 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 Dennis. Wow, what a cool show. You, know? you like it? Yeah, I do, I do. Oh, you know, yeah, it's a great day. Uh, British shows are always so interesting. I mean, yeah. there's, there's interesting cars. Golly, <laughs> what is it? Very interesting people. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they are. Always interesting people. Yeah. <laughs> and the setting, as you can see, is great. It's stunning. And I mean, there's some history here. This goes uh, way like back. 1877 or something it's, like it that. It is. It's old. And they just give us the grounds and we get to play on, on the weekend and park the cars basically where we want. It's just a wonderful collection of, of, of cars. And we're in Windsor, Nova Scotia, yep. which is a special place it in is. Canadian history. It is. It, it is. is. Yep. They do claim it is the home of hockey. This is where hockey was founded it, on it, Long, Pond Long Pond in Windsor, Nova Scotia. In Windsor, Nova Scotia. Well, that's, mm -hmm. that's something. It is. <laughs> I mean, it is. We, hockey is something up here. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> and I tell you, Nova Scotia is a gorgeous province. It is just beautiful. We got around a bit yesterday, hope to get out tomorrow again. There are some, I mean, there's some breathtaking things it here is and diverse. Yeah, yeah. It, it, very diverse. You don't have to drive very far to get a lot of variety. We've yeah. got lakes, forest, valleys, and ocean. And you only have to drive an hour and a half from one to the, the other. other. You yeah. even have the highlands in Cape Breton, as you Exactly, know. and that's yeah. what it's like. It's like, I feel like yeah. I'm, I'm in Scotland when oh, I'm there. It's it just is amazing. It's, it's breathtaking. Well, this is pretty breathtaking too. It's a great show. There's some incredible cars here, some I haven't seen, and maybe you can enlighten me. Let's go look at a couple. Okay. Well, guys, this is a, this is a really, a fave of mine, actually, the Boston Healey 100. Yes. Now this is, you know, when you see this, a lot of people will mistake this for the 3000, which is a much better known car. Yes. And and that designation, the 100, was because they could do 100, 100 miles, miles an hour. An hour. Yeah. But you know, and this is a 56. Yeah. I heard you coming in. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and this didn't sound like, you know, your, 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 your stock M, but she's just, just a beautiful car. In the original 100s, they weren't louvered. No, were they? That was a factory option. Oh, it was, eh? And it came with the 100M package. Okay. The, the louvered hood and carburetor cold air box and a cam and, and some other stuff. But gave them a little more power. But these side... Side louvers, I had custom made. You had custom made, yeah. so that was never a, yeah. a, a, an option. You, the race department yeah. did offer them. Oh, really? Uh, okay. And, and you do see a few around now. They're, they're more popular than they were. But I had them custom made. The wheels are... They're kind of classic. Yeah, they're a copy of the Mini Light Originals. And your windshield, uh, so what's the, I mean, could you get this as an option from the factory? That, or was this that's, an aftermarket? That's standard. Oh, really? That's On standard. the 100? No yep, kidding. Yep. And these would have been the, the original that, seats? The that's, type the original, of seats that that's the original type of seat. The I love the dash, though. I mean, that's not an original dash, no. but man, what a look. What's the deal on that? It's original style dash. Yeah. It, it, it was in a painted metal originally, mm. and then the guy who built this car done it in mahogany. This is like a Johnny Cash car in a way. You <laughs> one know, piece he, at a time? Yeah, <laughs> one piece at a time. So there's some gauges from Triumphs, and there's some Austin Healey gauges there, and then the Lucas switches. And yeah, yeah, I like that, the, the yep. toggles. Yep. They're so compact, they're so cozy with what, you know, such great lines on it. It's really, it's, it also looks a little bit like an MG a, a, only, yes. you know, yeah. bigger Just than that. On steroids. Exactly. And yeah. It was a thyroid condition. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, but again, uh, you got these honking pipes coming out the back. Yep. And mm -hmm. I think you got a boreless system on it, but it, it just sounded, it yeah. sounded really mean. She, she can make a lot of noise, but she's very sedate when, yeah. you're, when you're driving around. Okay, so enough talk. <laughs> Let's see what's better, under that better, hood, okay? Yeah. See what replaced the four. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that's more what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do we got here? So we have a 289 Ford Man. engine, a Range Rover intake manifold, added Jaguar carburetors, 
a big old Mercedes fan to keep her things cool. <laughs> Jaguar radiator. But the best, the best two parts are is that it has power disc brakes now off of a Healy 3000. Uh -huh. And it has a BMW close ratio five speed out of an M5 adapted to the Ford engine. So I have a modern transmission with really good all synchronous shifting. Oh yeah. So 1956. 56. Austin Healey 100 yep. on steroids. On steroids, <laughs> yeah. Garth, beautiful car. car, man. Thank you that very much, is, sir. That's a screamer. Yeah. Well, Rod, this is a cool little car. This this is a a singer, right? Not not to be confused with the sewing machine. Not to be confused with <laughs> sewing machine. But it runs like one, right? Runs like a sewing machine. Runs like a top. <laughs> this is a 59 Singer Gazelle. Still, made right? by the Roots Group by the Roots Group in, in England, in Coventry, in Coventry. England. Same place as Jaguar, right? Exactly. Now, is that a cast grill or is it? Is, is... The fins are all separate. Uh-huh, okay. Uh, the, the surround is uh, certainly cast and all the pieces are separate and bolted Ooh. in separately. Oh my goodness. So let's see, it's, uh, it's a four-speed? Four-speed, originally on the column, actually. It was a four-speed, it came in through here and the gear shift was over here. And, and that was still an H pattern, but it was up here, right? Eh? H pattern, but backwards. Oh. That's what you're used to. Oh, Because wow. it was, it was designed sure. for the other side, and they brought all the oh, linkages man. underneath the transmission. <laughs> that would be tricky. <laughs> this was all, you know, Singer interior, Singer seats and everything like that? This is the original seats. This was a bench seat, another personal touch. I, uh, out of a Sunbeam Rapier, I took the bucket seats oh. and... Uh, and they fit okay, no problem? Bolt it right in. Unbelievable. Bolt it right in. And the two-tone, I mean, two-tone was a common thing for them? Or? Oh, very much so. They had uh, any combination you would want. Man, I mean, it really is a pretty little car. Is this the Singer Insignia? The uh, Three Spires. Yeah? Three Spires of Coventry. Oh, okay. Wow. So what powers this monster? This is a four-cylinder, 1725cc, dual Zenith carburetors. This wow. car originally came with a 1494cc single carb putting out roughly 55 to 60 horsepower, which was great in 59. Yeah. But now trying to keep up with traffic, I put in this uh, 1725 out of a Sunbeam Alpine. It's basically a cousin of the Sunbeam, so that's exactly. you know, it's all in the family. Right? Everything, everything just bolt it right in, all in the family. So, you know, it's a personal touch, but I'm keeping it original within the, uh, you know, the framework of- Yeah, well, I mean, it looks like it fits marvelously. One of the reasons I like it is it's, uh, it's different. Oh, it's, it's different. Right, this is great. 59 Singer Gazelle. Correct. Beautiful. Thanks very much. What a ride. Well, Ben, this is a hard car to miss. Um, <laughs> this is a, a Lotus Elise. What year? It's uh, 2006. 2006. Yeah. I mean, these are really crazy looking cars. They're just little go-karts almost. They're mostly fiberglass and aluminum, right? Yeah, that's right. And way yeah. next to nothing. And so this is the, the radiator up here, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, yep. but it's cool because she's a mid-engine car, so it's, yes. it pipes all the way yep. back. I think they go the right through the tube frame, right wow. to the back. Yep. Wow, wow, wow. And you drive this thing. I saw you bombing around yesterday, but this is your daily driver? This is, yeah, I drive this every day. Everyone told me I was foolish for for doing it, but so, I take it to work every day, work that boots and- That is too yeah. cool, <laughs> it's just too cool. Man, she's down there, you know? Oh yeah, it sits it's, low, that's I mean, for sure. you're almost sitting on the ground here, right? That's I mean, what everyone says, you know, you sit in it and they're like, oh, it feels like you're sitting right on the road there. And that's your whole gauge pot, it's right there. That's right. And that, <laughs> that is a wee little steering yeah. wheel, isn't it? Not many creature comforts in this. <laughs> oh, so, it's more yeah. for show, right? Exactly. Wow. So now the side scoops, are they functional? Well, the one on the driver's side is definitely functional. It's got the air in take okay. right there. Well, it's, there's some uh, there's some metal flake in there too in this yeah. paint job. Boy, it's one of really... those tri-coat, yeah. tri-color paints. Oh, yeah. it really sparkles, man. So mid-engine, she's back here. Can you yes. pop it open? Yeah, me? sure. Now, this is what I find interesting about this car because it says Lotus, but it's not. That's right. It's a Toyota engine. And that's how, I mean, that's what they put in there, right? Yep, that's, that's right. But the heads are, are different, aren't they? Yeah, it's, I think Yamaha redid, or okay. did some, uh, some of their own magic on the heads Kind of like and, uh, with the Taurus SHOs. Yeah, you it's know, they have Yamaha heads. Yeah, that's yeah. That's right. Oh, it's just, it is, it's a great looking car. And have you ever been to this show before? No, first time here. Oh, really? Yeah. So what's it like having, you know, coming <laughs> roaring in here in a, you know, kind of a fancy, recently new Lotus Elise. Well, I feel a little out of place, but <laughs> yeah, not too familiar with the classic British cars, but 
like I said, trying to educate myself yeah. here and see well, some new stuff. This is a good place to get that education. And you know what? You're also educating the others here. Because I mean, this, <laughs> this is a British car, even though it's got a Toyota power plant. Lotus is a fine mark, and this is one cool ride, man. Thanks for bringing awesome. it out. Thanks for having me. 06 Elise, that is, that's way cool. Thank you. Well, Austin, this, this is a very cool machine. Uh, it's a Land Rover, it's a 62 Land Rover, what? A series 2A. Series 2A, okay. And you're, how old? 18. You're the ripe old age of 18. 18. Right. <laughs> it's an interesting car for an 18 year old, if you call it a car, I don't know, <laughs> I'd call it a tank or something. <laughs> but uh, why, why did you go Land Rover? It's really got personality that you really only find in classic, uh, classic British cars. Well, and, and this, I mean, she's, you know, you think of this and it's bounding across North Africa or something. Yeah, it's on a safari uh, or... Yeah. And there's a... I mean, it's thick metal. These things are really built. Yeah, and it's, it's aluminum too, so it doesn't rust. Oh, is it really? I didn't realize that. Yeah. No, oh. um... I mean, that which means all the... You mean the fenders are aluminum? Yeah. All, all, all the body is aluminum. I all did, the, all I, the weight is in the uh, steel galvanized chassis, I so... I did it, not know that. It won't tip. Wow. And this is your air conditioning, right? Yeah. That's, yeah, that's as, as good as that, it gets. That's as good as it gets. <laughs> And of course, a really plush interior here. Yes, um, the uh, the seats are new. But that's what they would have looked like in '62. That uh, these are slightly more um, comfortable yeah. than uh, what you can get. Now it looks like you've swapped out the gauges. No, those those are original. Wow, they're in great shape. Yeah, we uh, those are those were lucky finds. And you've got three shifts there. Of course, the your, your, your main gear selection. Red is what transfer case. Yeah, transfer case. And yellow is um, for the four x four engage. Okay, and and all this ducting here. What's what, is this your defroster? That's the, that's, that's the Kodiak heater. That was made for the uh, Canadian market only. Um, that's to, uh, to handle our harsh winters. It's the strongest heater they ever made in a Land Rover. This is gnarly. I mean, these things are just built to take a licking and keep on ticking. Yeah, it's a far cry from uh, today's SUVs. There's no sport in it, just utility. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Forget the S. This is a UV. <laughs> a UV. <laughs> this is a UV. Well, man, this is one cool machine. It's a, it's a 62 Land Rover. Series 2A. Series 2A. Man, I mean, and you're 18 years old. 18. You know, I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> Austin, way cool. I'm glad you brought it out. This thing's great. Thanks. Ray, this is an interesting car and one that I have never seen before or knew existed. <laughs> I mean, I certainly, you know, know the Jensen Interceptors. You know, yes. really gnarly, Mopar powered, British cars, but this predated the Interceptor, right? This is a this is a '65 CV8, right? So uh, this car has the advantage of being 600 pounds lighter than an Interceptor, oh, but wow. with the same honking great V8, which is kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's, and it's, you know this, the four headlights, candid. You know, it's a again almost a French Citroen look, but you say that predates this 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 would have predated the the uh, the slant-eyed Citroens by a year or two yeah Man, it's a wild looking car and very nice interior and kind of beefier than you'd normally expect a British car to be well I guess it was it was a grand tour in its day and it was it was um, sold against Aston Martin and Jaguar e types and that sort yeah. of thing so uh, it had to have the right stuff inside it yeah and, and those are I mean those are pretty pretty stout seats those seats are from a late 70s car okay so you know, parts-wise, the trunk uh, hinges? The trunk hinges are Riley 2.5 liter in 1954. That's uh, an MG. That's an MG. Piece. Yeah. B uh, boot release, yeah. And then how about the tail lights? Oh, Triumph Spitfire, um, Austin Mini Turn Signal, you know, all that sort of stuff. So the mix and match and, you know. Well, they, you know, for small pieces, they, they sure, just went to the industry because yeah. they only made 500 of these things. Over a period of? Uh, what, four years. Wow, yeah. wow. But the interesting thing about these cars is that they are Mopar powered. That is yes, that's, that's so weird. That's, well, that's the fun part. Let's go look at that. Okay, okay. so Ray, this, this thing has got the weirdest hood opening system I've ever seen. Take, take me through this. This is, this okay. is it. It's not, this is not a gas door, right? This that is not, not a fuel a, door. No, that's not a fuel door. That is, that is actually the lock cover. So the, the ritual goes like this. Insert key into the door, unlock door, revealing lever. Lever, pull up. It removes two pins from a, a hoop of chassis that goes through the, uh, the hood panel underneath. And you pull the safety off and lift, and, and the whole comes, thing comes up. And there is a, that's a 383 Chrysler, right? A 383 Chrysler, basically in your Roadrunner state of tune, though that one's a little bit, a little bit tweaked. And that's what it's supposed to be. I that's mean, that's, that's, that's what, what it, it's supposed to be. And the other nifty thing about it is if you look at the engine position, the front of the block is behind 
the front wheels. So it is a front mid-engined car. Uh huh. And the weight distribution is 50-50. Was it fun to drive? Oh yeah. Great hoop. <laughs> Great hoop. So it's a, it's a 1965 Jensen CV8, mm -hmm. right? One of 500 mm -hmm. made. Yeah. What a wild car, right? Oh, it's lots of fun. I love it. Thank you. You bet, man. Hey, the British Motoring Festival here in Windsor, Nova Scotia is a really nice show. And Nova Scotia is a really nice province. The Maritimes are a blast. You ought to check them out.